Chapter 11 Noah whistled as he came into Ramsley Pharma late in the morning after Boxing Day. Life was good. He went to see his brother first and found Anne in the outer office. Anne, I want to say thank you for staying with Al yesterday. Noah went directly to her. She says you were a real friend to her. You have a hickey on your neck, Anne remarked without looking up. What? Noah slapped a hand to his neck. Where? Anne looked up with a twinkle in her eye. I'm kidding. I like Al. Noah grinned. He was one lucky man. How's Michael's schedule? Does he have a moment that I can talk to him? He's got twenty minutes or so before the next meeting. Anne looked through the glass wall at Michael, concerned for him. He seems a little off today. Well, maybe my news will cheer him up, Noah said. I hope so. Anne smiled and grabbed a group of files. Agreed. Noah knocked on Michael's door before he entered the office, closing the door behind him. How did it go? Is Dad going to back off? If I ever become like our father, you will tell me, won't you? Michael sat on the edge of the window frame, looking out over the city. Michael, you're nothing like our old man, Noah said. He sat down in Michael's office chair because it was nearer to his brother. Did he try to get inside your head? His brother grimaced. When isn't he? Don't let him. Easy to say, tough to do, Michael fiddled with a pen. Your job is secure with the company. You'll have to take on the head of the laboratory's position, but you knew that was coming anyways. Is he going to be quiet about my marrying Al? Noah wanted to know. He had no intention of introducing her to David if the man was going to be rude to her. He will welcome her into this family with open arms, Michael said grimly. If you even want to continue to talk to him, which I think is optional for you at this point. How did you do it? He was ready to destroy me and you with that ultimatum. Noah couldn't believe it. It must be something huge that you blackmailed him with. It was, Michael said woodenly, still looking out the window. I think the worst part is where he smiled and said I was just like him after all. Hey! Noah stood up and put a hand on Michael's shoulder, giving it a squeeze. You hated blackmailing him. Dad actually likes to pull strings. He's the master puppeteer of all his manipulations. He enjoys that sort of stuff. You don't. You're nothing like him. Thank you. Michael gave Noah a tight smile. You know, I was finally able to get an independent lab to verify the diabetic drug should have failed in clinical trials. You didn't use that to blackmail Dad with? Noah had tried to replicate some of the chemistries of the drug without success. We could help out Max with this. Give him his old job back if he wants it. No, Michael sighed heavily. I could only do it in a third-rate lab out of Peru. No better labs will touch it. They're afraid of Ramsley Pharma, and I can't blame them. The results will never stand up in court. If it's not the drug results, then what did you use? Noah wondered. Something far more personal. As I've said before, it's better that you don't know. If it manages to go sideways, then hopefully I'm the only one Dad comes for. Michael watched Anne in the outer office for a moment. Truth was, he wasn't going to be the only one affected if David went rogue. Well, if you need any help with anything, let me know. I owe you, offered Noah. I'm your brother. You owe me nothing, Michael responded. He tossed the pen on his desk. Good news is, Dad has agreed to retire in the next year. Hopefully that means he won't be interfering in our lives so much. You got him to agree to retire? Noah asked in disbelief. He could just not believe it. He thought the old man would never leave the company. It was his life. Whatever dirt Michael had on David, it had to be earth-shattering. Barely, Michael lifted a shoulder and a shrug. He is nearly eighty, after all. Michael, are you sure you're okay with this? Noah asked. No, Michael said softly. I'm not okay with it. I just don't see any other alternative. I'm sorry, Noah said. Michael nodded, tired. He had another headache coming on. You should take Mom to see Max. She misses him. Do you think Dad would allow it? Noah scowled. He doesn't have a choice, Michael said grimly. Just don't be blatant about it. The less he knows, the better. What about you? Noah asked. When are you going to see Max? I don't know. Maybe when I forgive myself for not supporting him like I should have? Michael sighed. I'll pay for the steak dinner for you two. I lost the bet and I'll do that, but I think it's best if it's just you and Max right now. 
He'll forgive you. He's our brother. Noah put a hand on Michael's shoulder. Eventually, you'll forgive yourself, too. Michael nodded, but remained silent. Noah gave Michael a hug. Hey, I know we don't really say it, but I do love you. You're not my favorite brother since Max is, but you're a close second. Michael smiled at Noah's teasing and gave him a small shove. Get out of here. Go see your girl or something. Thanks, Michael, Noah said before he left the office. After he left, Anne came into the office with a glass of water and a couple of pain medication pills from her purse. She set them on the desk. I don't know how you pulled it off, Michael, but your brother and Elle are very happy. Thank you for looking after Elle last night. Michael took the pill, swung them down with some water. And thank you for looking after me. You're welcome. Anne gave him a smile and took the glass when he was finished. I've got the presentation portfolios already. Michael nodded. He knew that David was likely just making things up about Anne, trying to get Michael to be too furious to think clearly during their argument the other night, but part of him wondered at what the truth was. He stopped Anne just as she was about to exit the office. Anne? Yes, she paused, her hand on the handle of the door. Has my father ever made unwanted advances to you? Michael said evenly as he watched her carefully. He could tell that he had caught her off guard before her expression shuddered and she thought of what she should say. He has. Anne closed her eyes and took a deep breath. It was a long time ago. I rebuffed him and did my best to avoid him. Why didn't you tell me? He walked up to her so he could see her face clearly. Anne sighed and looked up at him. He's your father. I didn't want to make things difficult for you, and I was young and wasn't quite sure what he meant. Don't lie to me, Anne, my uncle quietly warned. Okay, so I knew what he wanted. He was pretty explicit. Anne shrugged. I still didn't want to involve you. You should have. I'm your boss. I'm here to help you with things like that, Michael said. Now what is the real reason you didn't tell me? Anne sighed, and she confessed. He made me feel cheap, like I was hanging myself out for anyone with a pulse. I was ashamed. You've nothing to be ashamed of. The telltale tick was back at Michael's jaw. He won't be doing it again. Anne put a hand on his arm. Please don't do anything, Michael. It happened a long time ago. He hasn't bothered me since, and I just tried to do my best to avoid him. Anne, Michael was starting to say, but she interrupted him. Please, Anne pleaded. I don't want to make any trouble for you. It's in the past, and I'd rather just forget about it. It's not any trouble. If anyone ever says or does anything to make you feel uncomfortable again, let me know, Michael said. Anne could see that she wasn't going to convince him to let it drop. Okay. Michael gave her a nod and headed out to the boardroom. One year. One year and his father would be retired from the company. Perhaps things would change for the better then. Hey, look who missed us, Polly said in greeting, and Noah gave him a nod as he came into the kitchen of the restaurant. Have you got a minute? Noah leaned on the counter, watching Max. Nope, I'm working, Max said, dumping some soap into the wash water. Well, that's too bad, because I brought a special visitor today for you, Noah grinned. What? Max dropped the pot back into the sudsy water and wiped his hands on a towel. Who? Go and see, Noah motioned to the restaurant. Elle is having coffee with her. Max shot Noah a confused look, but went into the restaurant. He saw Elle near the back, talking to an elegantly dressed woman. Mom? Rachel Ramsley looked up from examining Elle's ring. She stood with tears in her eyes and opened her arms for Max to give her a hug, which he gladly did. Maxwell Arthur Ramsley, where have you been for the past three years? Here and there. He rubbed her back and wiped a tear from his own eye. I missed you. Noah said he had a late Christmas surprise for me, and I thought it was the lovely woman right here who's going to be my daughter-in-law. Then you walked in the door. Rachel sniffed and backed up, patting Max on the cheek. I'm just so pleased. Thank you, Noah. Noah grinned as he sat down beside Elle and took her hand. I thought we should do better than the regular bottle of wine this year. Max, why don't you take a break and catch up with Mrs. Ramsley, Elle said. Oh, call me Rachel, she offered. She took a tissue and wiped her eyes delicately before sitting down. You're going to be part of our family. 
Max pulled out a chair and sat. This was your secret weapon, wasn't it? Mom always is, Noah smiled. She's the best. I figured if she couldn't get us talking again, no one could. I'm just glad I didn't have to use her. Thanks, Max said dryly. I'd start not talking to you again, but it's still holiday season, so I figure I'll give you a pass on this one. Good, Noah replied happily. You could use a haircut. Rachel gave Max's hair a little tug. Although you're the only one with curls. You were such a beautiful baby. El, you should see the pictures I have of these two boys. You should, Noah grinned. No, Max shook his head. Not the baby pictures. You're just jealous because Mom didn't cut your hair until you were two. Noah smiled a little maliciously. People started asking if he was a girl. Rachel sighed regretfully. I had to take him to the barber. Then I really do want to see the photos, El smiled. Max groaned. Maxwell, what happened? Rachel demanded. Where is your tooth? Max put a hand to his jaw, remembering the tooth that had gotten knocked out recently. With an impish look, he said, Noah did it. Oh, I did not, Noah stated emphatically. El laughed. She could just imagine how their children would be if these two were anything to go by. She held Noah's hand a little tighter, happy to have her ring and her wonderful fiancé for Christmas. Stay tuned for an epilogue and a sneak peek at the next Ramsley Brothers book.